reason I'm speaking English is uh, simply because our Polish language becomes an official language of the Union in three or four days from now. So uh, later on, it could go on in Polish, but for a moment, let's, let's be English. Uh, now, the additional comment before I start, uh, I would like to tell you not exactly, I don't want to stay in line in the spirit of my distinguished colleagues from another DGs. Uh, but I would like to tell you a story of a battle uh, of which uh, I was uh, a part participant for a moment. Uh, two years ago, all what I'm saying now would, could be considered as a sort of heresy. Actually, uh, one could tell these stories not even in Banquet, maybe in uh, some side places. And now, as uh, some of our comedians used to say, it becomes a party line. So what I'm going to tell you about the party line of Europe and enormous chance for Poland for the years to come. So basic research in Europe. And uh, I added subtitle, a challenge for the FP7. And of course, uh, the question always is what anybody understands by basic research. Uh, some people say that this is something that we do which is completely not useful. But of course, this is a, a bit jolly uh, um, uh, approach to research. But about 300 years ago, uh, Jonathan Swift uh, says very closely, uh, gave a definition of something that could be considered basic research, that just to see something that other people don't. And as I'm still a scientist, I want to give an example which perfectly illustrates what is basic research. And you have two absolutely identical structures. But the structure on the left is just water, and which is ice flake. We remember from winter just a couple of weeks ago. While the second one, which is geometrically the same, and it must be the same mother nature laws which governs the structure, is a bacterial colony. So you can see here that the asking question First is observation, then it's asking question. But if you go to the second, this yellowish, you can immediately go to applied site of life because you can define back bacteria or can use them or you can arrange them, aggregate them in the way you want, extract them and to use them uh, in your own way. So of course, this is not the perfect scientific definition of basic research but of course something, a glimpse, that you can go on and discuss for a couple of more hours since, the, since now. But of course the question is, uh, since we are talking about the uh, competitiveness, um, efficiency, money, budgets, economical approach to life, to Poland, so what for basic research? And I'm using uh, uh, a story about actually Michael Faraday, which was quoted by Aaron Klug, a Nobel laureate, very distinguished uh, um, uh, scientists of the UK. And uh, mm, uh, this question comes very often. So Michael Faraday one day was approached by the lady and uh, he was explaining in public his discovery of electromagnetism. And the lady asked, uh, sir, but what for is this electromagnetism? So he immediately replied, lady, what for, what is the purpose, what is the uh, um, uh, uh, use of newborn baby? And this is exact basic research. And of course, this, what I'm saying, is a very nice propaganda of basic research, but one has to be very realistic because this day you cannot make any research without money. And of course, people like Minister Franz Kovac must uh, twist his mind and distribute properly money into various uh, groups of people and to satisfy those crazy basic researchers as well as very solid people, let's say from coal miners, uh, uh, mines or the other uh, um, uh, enterprises. But um, as, again, I'm, as I'm a scientist, I'm, uh, I would like to give you not only words, but to want to show you some pictures that and make, make you thinking. So this statistics 
comes from all Europe, and this data is taken, you can find this in the internet, by the Commission. So if you take 100% a whole population of researchers in Europe, so you can see enormous anomaly in our countries, means Poland, all accession countries. Uh, if you take this yellow bar is universities, the green one is governmental laboratories, where Polish Academy of Sciences in this count is considered the governmental. The, the, something that you don't see is industrial part of research. And you can see that in Poland, 80% of researchers do not work in industry. I would say even more than that, but this is an official figure. While if you go to Japan, in Japan, three quarters of researchers work in industry. Again, enormous anomaly, and everybody of us know why this anomaly happens, is in accession countries. Definitely, we approximately finance our research two-thirds, or even more, from the budget and one-third from the other sources, while this is completely reversed in advanced economies. But of course, this is a subject for itself. But then the green one. The green one is what is the pro proportion of all money spent for research which goes to the basic research. And you can see that in advanced economies, this is 20, 25% at most. In case of our countries, this is more than one third of money. And now you can ask the question, is it wrong or it is correct? Well, my answer is that this is superb, that this is just the wisdom of our former ministers who, were, who didn't allow killing, financing basic research in Poland. But the same may apply to Hungary, Slovak Republic, Czech Republic. Again, if we go uh, to Poland and we see these numbers, so you can see universities, is two-thirds of people working at universities. Because polytechnic institutes uh, are on the same footing as, as Warsaw University or Jagiellonian. And, uh, and really, quite a lot of these people work on something that is easily defined as basic research, or let's say science-driven research, while the applied is rather considered policy-driven research or purpose-driven research. And why are we strong? And this statistics, uh, I mean, this actually, uh, the table, is taken mostly by uh, some quantitative measures uh, by KBN, uh, especially Professor Wroblewski, whom you may know, he was the deputy uh, chairman of the KBN, and he made enormous effort to, to quantify this, this feeling, where we are strong and we are not. And of course, uh, I'm saying of course because of the history, we are strongest in something that is definitely uh, considered basic research. So my first message which I would like to convey to this audience is that this is our great asset. We have to think how to use it. And the question is to what extent we can get support for this activity from other resources, not only from our state budget, which maybe must be used for sh more short-term uh, enterprises. So one more uh, graph of this type, which is students in Poland. We all are very proud of this. There's enormous explosions of students in Poland. Within the decade, the number of students increased from less than a half a million to about two million uh, studying every year. But it, it's not only joy of the number, but it must make us concerned because now every year almost half a million young people get a diploma and very soon, really very soon, in basic numbers, we become one of the best educated country of Europe. We must be very proud of this and we have to utilize this. And again, studies and these people, the choice of these people, means that they have a trust in the future. Because who otherwise would go and spend five, six years of hard time without working and earning money? So this is, I think, message with which we go to Europe very proud and we have to use it. And of course, the, some of these talented people may stay in research and some 
may do basic research, and of course there are uh, some reasons why they do so. But of course, what I, what I, what I was saying to you, it was a sort of uh, uh, arguments to improve our own feeling. But now the second leg is, what Europe thinks about that? And I'm very proud to say that Europe changed its policy and this is a chance for us to use it. Because, as I say, if you look for the treaty, Maastricht Treaty, Maastricht Treaty explicitly states that the community money must be used for increase of competitiveness. So quite a lot of people understood it, that basic research is completely out of this money. But now it's not only lawyers who consider this was a faulty thinking. So first were the scientists who really started to make enormous plea because as you know, framework programs, framework program is a definition where, in which areas Europe spends money for research. If Europe decides that from now on we spend on, let's say, uh, the study of, of cancer, this will become a framework. Uh, um, but the, the scientists started to make a plea that something is very faulty in the European system, that we finance centrally something which is very much local, because the business is local, while something which is completely country independent is not funded centrally, which is basic research. So it started from 45 Nobel laureates, European laureates, who signed a petition to Commissioner Biscard. And there were one after another major European institutions and organizations saying, we have to change European policy. It must be a new way to support basic research in Europe, and not small money, big money. So uh, uh, one has to remember that basic research is not exactly the same as industrial research. It is specific. It's much more, it's smaller, less people in, in, in the team, sometimes individual, a solitude, and definitely very long time uh, perspective. And I was a, a participant of, of one of the first teams who produced this, this position paper, this European Science Foundation. Twelve of us, unfortunately one has died a year ago. And uh, we produced a proposal that Europe must consider to create so-called European Research Council. A new agency, a new institution that would have enough money to distribute in a sensible way among researchers in Europe to support basic research. And there are three solutions. I must frankly say there is not yet a, a final decision. I think the decision is now, political decision, to, to have this money. But how to distribute, this is another story. It could be a part of a framework program, it could be an agency based on European, or let's say Brussels structure, but it could be a completely an independent entity which is called European Research Council. Not yet a decision. But of course, what are the principles? The point is that it must be a system of grants and only top people via competition may get this money. But not in a very bureaucratic way of which sometimes people say Brussels machinery is very famous of. So it has to be changed. But the point is, this, this, just to, to be absolutely on the, on the serious side, if some people say that Brussels is over-bureaucratic, these people tend to forget that this is a part of enormous responsibility of Brussels vis-à-vis -vis member countries. It's accountability of their decisions. And this is why everything has to go very point by point. Now, the question for whom? I already started to say, to really cream of the crop. And it will be very useful because it will create also a sort of benchmark, standards. So, after creation of this system, nobody could get money because uh, has friends locally who can support him. No, because then the reference must go to a larger European pool. Uh, so, uh, what actions? Well, we know what is the list. Grants, networks, 
conferences, individuals, and so on and so on. And after this lengthy scientific or scientist discussion and plea, uh, the Dutch government, uh, the, the, the Danish government, actually the Minister of Science of, of Denmark, after the conference devoted to this issue, invited several people to produce for the Commission and for the European Parliament a report which updated all this discussion and formulated it in a more precise way. And here is something of the very lengthy document I really would like you to remember. A number how much money this group proposes and we are now talking about this amount of money per year. Two billion euro, which is three times more than the budget of science of Poland. Only for basic research. So, I really think that this is, with physicists, called a phase transition. This is a revolution. And we are witnessing a revolution. And we have to use, we have to participate in this re revolution, and we must use its fruits. So this is very, very important. And of course, all this was talking by scientists. Shy, talkative, whoever you take. But then the politicians, for the first time, they started to take it as a political issue. It was Lisbon, Barcelona targets. And now, Mr. Commissioner Busquin said the following. We have a missing pillar of European research area. And this is basic research. We have to do something about that. So this gentleman was again a visionary. The scientist, he listened to scientists and he declared this as the commission, or let's say union policy. And the next group of enormous importance was Irish presidency, because Irish deputy prime minister, Mrs. Mary Harney, could manage the other ministers to make a statement which went to Competitiveness Council that indeed Europe has to finance basic research in a very substantial way. And very soon, in a couple of months from now, very likely that presidency will make a grand finale of that. So there were several conferences, here are the outcome, but I would like to point out one very important document which is also on the CD-ROM, which is a statement on basic research of the Commission itself. The Commission for years was very cautious, and now it becomes one of the leaders of this reform, very interesting. And the Commission says that basic research has to be financed in Europe, <coughs> centrally. Uh, it must be a one of the important parts, actually one of the five or six pillars of the new framework program uh, starting 2007. It must go through individual grants, not via contracts, by grants. Here's the money, you do. And finally, the procedure must be light. So now, as, you, as I say, it becomes a party line, the commission line. And of course one can ask, do we have to try? Not necessary, because Europe already has a certain great achievement. Actually tomorrow one of our colleagues is going, or actually more than one, is going to tell you about such actions of the Commission, which is Marie Curie, uh, future emerging technologies, NEST, and infrastructure support. And also outside organizations have certain programs, and we do participate in this. So uh, just to sum up, why basic research in accession countries still should remain a prime target. I consider there are two arguments. One is economical. It's least expensive. This is the beginning of the research on the road to a product. So really, this is cheapest use of our mind. It has to have a continuity. But it doesn't requ require enormous amount of money unless you want to have a super accelerator, which is definitely not the case of Poland. But the second point relates to higher education. Good higher education, Ivy League of the world, is always a place where top research is being done. And in most cases, this is basic research. So if my country and if you don't want to be a kind of amusement place or tax heaven or whatever, but a serious 
and as going back to what Minister Kleiber said a couple of years ago, we have great ambitions. And this ambition means that we have to seriously reconsider our great asset. I come back to this, this graph at the beginning. How many top scientists in Poland work in basic research? Here, uh, I'm just coming to the end. We, as Poland, have enormous responsibility. On the left side, uh, you can see how, what is our contribution of the GDP of Poland? Half. What is contribution of our funds for research? A little bit more, but still enormously large. If you go to the number of researchers, again, Poland provides more than half of researchers of accession countries. And quite a large number of these people are people famous, known, and making perfect, very well recognized work in, in the world in basic research. Therefore, I think that this is our chance. And with the permission of our chairman, I switch to Polish, because this comment I want to make, which is directly addressed to Poles. The others can get it translated. Proszę Państwa, Polska przez wiele lat była kojarzona z dwoma produktami. Z węglem i z wyborową. Myślę, że czas nadszedł, żeby skończyć z tym tragicznym mitem. My naprawdę mamy wiele skarbów narodowych. I ludzie, którzy pracują w badaniach podstawowych, to jest jeden z naszych wielkich skarbów. I myślę, że jeżeli ktokolwiek będzie robił przyszłą politykę kraju naukową, musi o tych ludzi, ludziach pamiętać. A w tej chwili wygląda na to, że ci ludzie wcale nie muszą obciążać naszego budżetu. Mogą obciążyć budżet z sukcesem Unii Europejskiej. Dziękuję bardzo. Thank you very much.